when building data intensive strategies one of the most difficult part is if you have lot of instruments and you want to do a sliding window operation let's say you want to do a look back calculation and you have lot of instruments or tickers or just a number of permutations permutations is very high what happens is the code that you use can slow down the computation significantly in this video i'm trying to solve that problem stick till the very end and you will understand the concept of jit which is just in time compilation it's a very simple a uh, couple of lines of code but i'll show you the difference what happens when you do some sort of an optimization in the code and how, how fast your code can run uh, this is extremely important if you want to do time series based analysis quant based analysis because most of them does lot of complex calculations and doing this can significantly improve your coding performance or not just the coding performance actually the time it takes for your code to run so there's a bunch of sections in here uh, it's just like generate synthetic data parameter setup calculating returns defining an optimized rolling function computing momentum aligning returns the jit part actually the back testing and running the back test so this this strategy by far i'll just give a small overview it's not really a tradable strategy per per se so don't 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 go so much into looking at the strategy and understanding but the the intent here is that there's momentum which is calculated over a specific look back period let's say you know 20 periods and uh, momentum is ending price minus starting price divided by start price and the signal generation can be you know uh, let's say if the momentum exceeds some sort of a threshold 2% 3% then you want to go buy go long or if it's minus 2% short so pure simple momentum based strategy the complexity here is back testing because what we are trying to do is do this simulate this over a large number of assets over a significant portfolio so if you want to do a lot of big analysis this would be really helpful let's dive in so all of this code by the way so if you are new to the channel please subscribe this is akash varma and uh, i frequently talk about financial engineering quants ai how to use technology in trading because i believe technology is going to influence a lot of that in the times to come that's point one some simple channel perks free whatsapp channel no strings attached media free tons of people to help around so join the community literally it's all gain there there is a membership community where i post access to all the code everything that i do some member specific videos it's a small community and it is cheap paid but if you like my content that small amount of contribution could help me big time so please subscribe and join the membership let's dive in so i have generated some synthetic data here just standard stuff there's numpy pandas matplotlib which is standard and this library is going to do the most of the heavy lifting here i'm going to just go and show you what this is so namba is a open source jit compiler that translates python and numpy into machine code uh, it's important to know that this works for a series of uh, or a, some specific kind of data like namba and all of that sorry numpy and that kind of library it's not like it will optimize all sorts of library but for numerical calculations even if you see on the right hand side in their example they have shown monte carlo any sort of parallelism is equals to true parallelizing algorithms a bunch of that could be there you, if you want to do gpu acceleration vectorization operations tons of that can be enabled by namba two core uh, modules is what we are you going to use so first is njet Uh, which is the basically the jit module just in time compilation module which is essentially the core function the decorator to produce the efficient machine code and then the second is p range which uh, i also have forgotten yeah, i think p range is the listing function yeah parallel range it, it's kind of helps generating loops in parallel because if you have multiple loops it it will help you generate in parallel like you won't want to do in back testing let's dive back in the code there are three four parameters the threshold sorry number of assets 500 this can be increased number of time period let's say number of trading days this can be you know if if your date if your number of time periods are high let's say you want to look back 
seconds or five seconds or ten seconds then you are operating at a very large number of periods right if your overall data is high for instance let's say that you are uh, doing let's say you have an eight hour trading window you have 60 minutes and uh, you want to do five so that's like 2400 and you want to do this over let's say uh, you know 180 days if i'm probably doing something wrong that could be okay but yeah a significantly large number of combinations look back periods can be achieved if you want to uh, you know do that the number is not so important i'm just trying to demonstrate what number of period can be it can be uh, it can be even a combination of sliding windows two two look back periods at the same time sometimes you want to look for let's say five second and ten second also at the same time right look at how much momentum has been gained in five second how much momentum has been gained in 10 seconds and how much has been gained in 15 seconds over a sliding window uh, various complexities of time is possible why you would do that i don't know i probably wouldn't number of assets just number of assets to simulate look back period window which is the you know date look back momentum window threshold uh, 0 0.02 again don't go so much in the trading strategy as such uh, that's not important but i'll keep running the code at, at the same time just to make sure it runs then you generate the data so it's generating basically synthetic data and then i'm having some uh, general rolling window functions to calculate the stride so basically calculating the shape of the data for calculating the shape of the time series look back period minus operations rolling operations and all of that so basically getting the momentum given the price and the window that's what you would get and then finally the get the momentum in some sort of an array so this is a 2d array where each element represents the momentum for the asset at a given time then you have uh, the returns and the price just adjusted because they are my uh, like uh, time period correction and finally the core part which i wanted to come to so this is a back testing function i'm not going to get into the logic per se it's basically just simple cross as a threshold 0.2 percent go long otherwise go short and i have added a time it what time it does is it will show you the time it has taken so this is going to take uh, i've run this before but let's see uh, i'll uh, submit this run and probably it might take a little faster uh, because things could have been cash or it will take the same amount of time last time it took like three seconds or five seconds the actual time could be longer because you can literally see me talking and see the code running but uh, some sort of offloading will be happening it gives you the really the the cpu time that it uh, consumes and uh, we'll have to let it finish because uh, there's not much i can do here i need to yeah it took 3.7 seconds per loop right uh, how many loops it run i don't know probably 500 times or something this is gonna take a lot of seconds like right the total time can be much more higher there's another uh cell another function that's there percent time it maybe i'll just try it in the next one uh i'll see what else is and so just enabling this which is at the rate ng parallel is equals to true uh, let me learn that this time. Let's see what the difference it gives me. Okay, it just finished query pretty quickly. Not 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 significant and not helpful. Okay, last time we can see it took like 29 seconds, which is fine. Uh, I'll just ignore it, but I'll just rerun this code. And let's just see how much time it takes now. So it took 29, 30 seconds before. Now it took 4 seconds. So 4, 29. You see the difference, right? And the whole difference and the per loop time has also significantly reduced, you know, 43.5 millisecond compared to three second per loop, which is what is causing the difference. So if you increase this, right, if you just uh, in think about that, how much more can this take, then you would start to see the power. And after that, I'm just adding a simple dumb sort of a plotting function, which is plotting the strategy with advanced NumPy optimization. So all of the magic in this conversation, if I have to sum up the whole past 10 minutes, is this line, which is ng parallel is equals to true. However, you do have to make sure that your code uh, is using NumPy and is uh, kind of uh, written in a way that it uh, gets optimized. The loops needs to exist, the conditions needs to be variable. If you can do vectorization, those things are better. 
but the engit compilation parallel is equals to true will make sure that it runs on the machine code and have parallel execution and this would give you insane results like 4 second 29 seconds you can literally see the difference and that's what this whole video has been about thank you for listening bye bye